worship team's job to uh, start us up. Hopefully we've already come in with a song and then collectively as one body, we are gonna worship Jesus. We're gonna give him his full reward. So I just wanna remind us, this is one of my favorite Psalms, Psalms 150. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. That might be my voice. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. That's the guitars. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes, are you breathing right now? Yes. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we are delighted to be here to worship you this morning. We are welcome you into our presence. Holy Spirit, would you do your work in us so that we can withhold nothing from you this morning? Amen.
now pour it out we love you we
Life 
and is coming. Jesus, Jesus, you are worthy. You are faithful. Even if we're faithless, you remain faithful and we thank you. Lord, we want to celebrate. We want to feast. We want to feast on your body, Jesus. We're going to take communion right now. If we can stay in this, in this place of reverence, stay in this place of awe. Give you a little of instruction as we stay in this place, but just keep your heart transfixed on the one who is worthy. Our ushers are going to be passing the elements. If We'll go row by row, and as it gets to your end, if you could just turn around and give it to the person in the row behind you. Um, If you've been here for any length of time, you know that we have buckets at the end, but those of you on the ends of the aisles in charge of those buckets, um, just hold on, okay? We want to stay focused. I'll let you know when it's time to collect the elements. As I was uh, praying for our time, I just felt the Lord draw me into Hebrews 10. I encourage you this week, if you can, to read the entire chapter. It's rich with illustrations, but I don't know about you, but I, wasn't, I, was, I was raised on a farm, but we didn't slaughter goats and bulls in a way to make ourselves okay. We didn't have to bring sacrifices. And what I realized for myself is that tends to be lost on me because I don't have a frame of reference. I was around animals, but I wasn't involved in the slaughtering process and they weren't offered in atonement for my sin. So I just said, Lord, how can I relate to this today? And he's like, what do you do out of fear in hopes that you'll be in a better state with me? Oh, I can relate to that. The ways by which I try to self-improve out of fear, not out of love because I'm completely in love with the man who gave his life for me. Do you see the difference? We can respond and there can be religious activity because we can't help ourselves because he's worthy. But then there's things that we do in hopes that we can stay out of trouble. But Jesus has made a way. So I'm going to be reading at the beginning of chapter 10. So the old system of living under the law presented us with only a faint shadow, a crude outline of the reality of the wonderful blessings to come. Even with its steady stream of sacrifices offered year after year, there still was nothing that could make our hearts perfect before God. For if animal sacrifices could once and for all eliminate sin, they would have ceased to be offered and the worshipers would have clean consciences. consciences. Instead, once was not enough. So by the repetitive sacrifices year after year, the worshipers were continually reminded of their sins with their hearts still impure. For what power does the blood of bulls and goats have to remove sin's guilt? So when Jesus the Messiah came into the world, he said, since your ultimate desire was not another animal sacrifice, you have clothed me with a body that I might offer myself instead. Multiple burnt offerings and sin offerings cannot satisfy your justice. So I said to you, God, I will be the one to go 
and do your will to fulfill all that is written of me in your word. First, he said, multiple burnt offerings and sin offerings cannot satisfy your justice, even though the law required them to be offered. And then he said, God, I will be the one to go and do your will. So by being the sacrifice that removes sin, he abolishes animal sacrifices and replaces that entire system with the new covenant. By God's will, we have been purified and made holy once and for all. Say that with me, once and for all. Through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus, the Messiah. But when this priest, Jesus, had offered the one supreme sacrifice for sin for all time, he sat down on a throne at the right hand of God, waiting until all his whispering enemies are subdued and turned into his footstool. And by his one perfect sacrifice, he made us perfectly holy and complete for all the time. And it is with this thanksgiving in mind that we get to partake. We get to feast on his body and his blood represented by these elements. In Matthew 26, 26, it says, As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. So Jesus, we ask you right now that you would bless these elements. And then he broke it in pieces. And then giving thanks, he gave it to each one. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. So let's take the bread. And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks gave it to them and he said each of you drink from it for this is my blood which confirms the new covenant take and drink so I'm going to read on continuing in verse 19 and now We are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. We are brothers and sisters. We are a part of one body because of this blood. And he welcomes us to come into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm boldly and without hesitation. For he has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. And since we now have a magnificent high priest to welcome us into God's house, we come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced, say fully convinced, that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. For our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove impurity and we have been freed, say freed, from an accusing conscience. Now we are clean, unstained and presentable to God inside and out. So now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us knowing that God always keeps his promises. Amen, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. Yeah, you can thank him now, that would be good. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, that we are completely whole. We are completely made whole and holy by your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Now you can uh, grab your little buckets at the end and pass those through the aisles and collect your, your containers there. Worship team, thank you so much for the way that you led us this morning. Yes, it's so beautiful. Well, I'm Christine. I'm on the pastoral team here, and I'm so glad to welcome you this morning to Grace Center, and welcome to our online viewers. Um, If you're new to Grace Center, um, we would love to get to know you or answer any questions you might have. If you scan this QR code, uh, you'll put in some information, and a pastor will contact you later to answer any questions 
um, that you might have. At this time, we are going to receive our tithes and offerings. Woohoo! It's right. Um, you all know we have a push pay app. You can use that or you can go to gracecenter.us slash give. Um, or we have boxes at both the front and the back doors if you would prefer to pay with uh, check or cash. Um, we love to make declarations over our finances, don't we? So if you will stand with me, we are going to do that this morning. My favorite one, I always feel like I have to do a disclaimer, Pastor Jeff, I'm not asking for a better job, okay? I'm just repeating on the sake of everybody else. All right, here we go. Okay, as we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, tips and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs that we may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, if you will be seated, we are going to run this week's announcements. Just turn your attention to the screen. Thanks. Nosotros somos Genesis y Jackie Rivas. Y estamos aquí con algunos de nuestros amigos de habla hispana de Grace Center. Hola. Siéntete libre de acercarte a cualquiera de nosotros si necesitas ayuda conectándote o si tienes alguna pregunta durante nuestros servicios de los domingos. Este es un recordatorio que la traducción al español está disponible durante nuestros servicios de las 11 y 15 de la mañana a través de la aplicación Interactive. Si necesitas ayuda descargándola, entra a gracecenter.us barra inclinada traducción o pregunta a una persona y te podremos ayudar. Estamos muy emocionados de crecer como una familia multicultural de creyentes llenos de esperanza que crean un ambiente donde la presencia de Dios puede descansar. Adiós. As a church family, we're discovering what it looks like to enter a corporate rhythm of worship, fasting, and prayer. We invite you to join us tonight at 6 p.m. in the prayer room for our launch of Sunday night prayer and worship. This new weekly gathering is purposed to dedicate space and time together to focus our attention on Jesus and agree with the heartbeat of heaven in prayer for our homes, city, nation, and beyond. Hope to see you there. There's nothing like experiencing the transformative power of Jesus' words. You are invited to join us for our next Wednesday night discipleship class beginning this Wednesday as we spend six weeks diving into Jesus' words in Matthew 5, the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount. Class will run from 7 to 8.30 p.m. and the cafe will be open an hour beforehand for those who would like to connect with others. Children's ministry will also be available with pre-registration, so head over to gracecenter.us slash events to save your spot. We're so excited to learn from the Word of God together. If you are involved in or have a heart for business in the marketplace, join us for Business Matters Lunch this Wednesday, April 10th at noon in the Firehouse. This month, we have the honor to hear from John Solomon on what it looks like to know the times and seasons and how to steward well through investing. For more information and to save your lunch spot, visit gracecenter.us slash events. Join us on Sunday, April 14th for our Missions Connect Lunch in the Prayer Room. We will be hearing from a member of Grace Center whose identity we cannot disclose in order to protect her and her practical compassion organization in a closed nation. The organization she works with provides life-saving care for unborn babies, infants, and children in war zones, and in some of the hardest conditions on earth. You do not want to miss what she will be sharing with us. Lunch is available for a suggested donation of $5. All money goes towards the Grace Center Missions Department. Save your spot by registering at gracecenter.us slash events. Join us for our upcoming Grace Revealed Weekend, April 19th and 20th in the Firehouse. This weekend is all about personally experiencing the transforming presence of Jesus and discovering the abundant life he offers us. We will spend time unpacking all that Jesus has provided for us as believers and discover more about the healing he offers for internal wounds or mindsets that could be hindering our growth into fully mature sons and daughters. Grace Revealed is open to all those who attend Grace Center and is an especially great next step for those who are interested in serving. Learn more and sign up by visiting gracecenter.us events. 
Thanks for joining us this morning. For more information on what's happening at Grace Center, visit gracecenter.us slash events. Have a great week. Have a great week. Yay. Good morning, Grace Center. Good morning. How are you? Hey, wow, that's great. That's awesome. You're awake. Yay. I'm awake. Yay. Um, we want to do something. Uh, where I, normally, I have you stand up and uh, greet each other, which we're going to do that in just a second. But first, we're going to um, we'll bring up Ian Gordon. And here, well, I want to read something to you as, a, as kind of a introduction to what I'm about to say, not to Ian Gordon, but it could be. So Amos 9, Amos 9, 13, in the message says this. So I heard this, uh, I heard this verse last November when I was in Detroit with Bishop Garlington and they said, hey, we feel like that this is a, a verse that's going to be prevalent in the church And uh, let me just read this to you. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I will make everything right again. And so the reason I I say that and read that is because we have been in a season where it feels just like that. Everything is happening so fast. We were just talking before Ian uh, got up here and realized uh, a couple of things. One is we've made a change uh, on the board and we have not informed you, hence... Amos 9, 13, things are going to be happening so fast it'll make your head swim. But the the change is, is that Tony Wakefield, who's been our treasurer for several years, and Tony, are you here? I know that today's their their anniversary. But anyway, for years, uh, is uh, also getting his counseling license and degree. And so there's a trajectory that he's been on pursuing that uh, career and so, uh, in the meantime, the, the board appointed Ian Gordon as, <laughs> as our church treasurer. And so, I've asked Ian, if he would, if he would come uh, this morning and bring the, the treasurer's report. <laughs> oh, you need a microphone, don't you? It's, it's B-Y-O-M. Bring your own microphone. <laughs> Maybe you'd rather give him the treasurer's report without a microphone. That would be good, wouldn't it? Morning. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to see all your smiling faces. I'm going to fix that because I'm talking about finances. So. But it's interesting that as, as Tony has you know, moved from leadership to pastoring and now to counseling, a lot of the things that he's been passing off as he's built up his, his counseling career and, and his counseling calling have fallen to Karen and me. Uh, and in each of those things, we feel like we've been set up well for success and that we're actually standing on the shoulders of a giant. And uh, this is no exception in terms of coming onto the board and following Tony as treasurer. So I know you're not here, Tony, but if you're watching, thank you very much. Thank you. So, but it's important to let you know, as a church, the state of our finances and also basically to show you where the money that you've been giving us so faithfully has gone. That's what we've done with it. So as you know, Grace Center is a non-profit organization as well as a church. So when it comes to our finances, we're recognized as a non-profit by the state and by us as a church by heaven. So when making decisions about our finances, the board have to be cognizant of both our earthly responsibilities, but also deploy heavenly wisdom and discernment. It's a bit like that quote that I'm telling anybody who'll listen at the moment from a Christian a theologian, Ray Anderson. He says, and this is great, effective leadership is reading the signs of God's promises in the context of current events and translating those into goals. In this way, we prepare the way of the Lord. Isn't that good? 
And that's how the board operates in all things, and particularly in relation to finances. And they did that when we received a significant additional amount of income at the end of 2021. And the board considered 2021 as a year of plenty and were aware that there could be years of, for fallow years, or years of shortage coming. So they held that money back. And they were right, the lean years did come. 2022 and 2023 were lean years. And the main causes of that was the fact that our giving, although good, still hadn't come up back beyond the levels it was before COVID. So, <laughs> as you may remember last year, Tony reported a significant deficit and that, income was, that deficit was providentially covered by the extra income from 2021. Last year, our income was also down on previous years and only just began to recover toward the end of last year and into this year. So I'll give you the, the headline figures from last year. The total income from your tithes and offerings, which is the only source of income we have as a church, was just over three and a quarter million dollars. And I want to say here and now, if nowhere else, thank you. Thank you very much, so much for your sacrificial giving and for your faithful listening to the Lord and giving money to the church. You literally keep the church running with your giving. So large their income was, they said it still hasn't come back up to pre-COVID. Our expenditure, however, has had no problems getting beyond COVID. <laughs> and this was how much we, we spent last year. This is what it cost to actually keep the church running day to day to day. These are our operating expenses. And just give you an idea of what that looked like and where that money went, here we got it broken up into a donut, not a pie chart, but a donut chart. We've got, come to the conclusion that mathematicians are always hungry. So we've got a pie chart, we've got a donut chart. But as you'd expect, Grace Centre is an organisation where primarily what we do is we provide pastoral care, ministry support, and other personal support to you and to our community. So you'd expect that the bulk of our expenses goes on our amazing staff team, and they are amazing. It's 55% of our costs, but believe me, it's a bargain. The remaining costs are all spent at out-of-pocket expenses to support the ministries that our staff provide, like our buildings, ministry materials, and such like. But everything we spend is directly related to the services the church provides you as a congregation and to the communities we support, both here and abroad. And we are, please believe me, enormously grateful for your sacrificial giving to the church. We literally, literally could not do this without you. So back to the headline figures. You've seen that our operating expenses are roughly the same as our income. So that gave us a very, very small operating surplus of just $8,000. But we see additional income to the tithes and offerings you provide, what we call designated giving, where you give money specifically for certain purposes or designations like Papa's Pantry, or missions trips, or special offerings that we have every so often. And your additional giving last year was an amazing quarter of a million dollars. Again, thank you so much. And by law, we have to pass that designated giving on to the things for which it was designated. That's just what you have to do. So then we, when we look at that being given out of the church and we add to it the tithe, which we also give as a church, the total amount we gave from the church last year was just about $590,000. Now, some of you may be doing the math in your head and thinking, well, if you only had £8,000 profit, why are you giving away the best part of $600,000? Well, we ask you to sacrificially tithe. We ask you to give into the Lord's work, and we do the same. We had this providential giving at the end of 2021. We knew we had it. It was a, a bit of a stretch to give it, but we gave as well. We can't ask you to tithe and not do it ourselves. We literally have to practice what we preach. So this left us with a very much smaller deficit than we had in 22, but a significant one nonetheless. But as in 22, the extra income we got at the end of 21 was enough to cover this deficit. And it also allowed the board to make a couple of items of capital expenditure, such as the new sound system we got on here, which is amazing and replacing a number of HVAC units which are failing with monotonous regularity around the church <laughs> at the moment. But that, that extra income we got in 2021 is done now. 
and we're just beginning to look like there's some recovery in income, but we, we cannot be complacent in no way. So we praise the Lord for his provision and for the wisdom of the board in their stewardship and their decision making in recent years. But I would not be doing my job as treasurer if I did not earnestly ask you for your continued and even your increased support as we go forward. I see giving, our giving to the church is the only income that we have. And as the church continues to grow in numbers and impact both here and overseas, we really need to just keep leaning in, keep leaning in and continue to partner with the Lord in what he's doing to bring transformation to our homes, to our cities and to beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Well, let's, uh, so I can transition over and set up my computer. Would you mind standing up and just take a minute and find out who's sitting around you, introduce yourself, and we'll get started here right away.
Okay. Another uh, 20 to 30 seconds and then we'll... let this young man <laughs> give us a testimony here. This is, uh, this is, a lot of you know Bill. This is Bill Zofel. And uh, Bill, uh, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'm just going to say what you just told me. So Bill came up to me during uh, worship and said, uh, you know I'm a walking miracle, right? I said, yeah. He says, I'm happy to give my testimony anytime. And so I thought, you know, it would be a great, now would be a great time. Okay. Can you tell us what's going on? Um, yes. Uh, about a year ago, uh, actually I was going to the bathroom all the time, so they gave me a special medication to stop that. And the blood work showed that it messed me up. So they sent me to the emergency room to figure that out. But in the hospital... My kidneys were swelling and hard. They had to put stints into the kidneys. And while they were looking at that, I found I had stage four prostate cancer. So thinking, okay. So um, no pain, but what's going on? So got out of the hospital after about a week. And for three or four weeks, I had a hard time breathing. So they checked my lungs. The right lung was swimming in water. They took 1.1 liters of water from my right lung. Two days later, they took 1.3 liters from my left lung. Uh, still having trouble breathing. Went uh, two days later, we were doing the, uh, the checkup for my heart. And they said, have you ever had a heart attack? And I said, no. They <clears> said, you need to go to the emergency room. So they sent me to the emergency room. And uh, they checked my heart. I had 95% blockage in my major artery, the, the widow maker. Mm. So my lungs are floating in water. They're still doing that at that time. My kidneys aren't working. My numbers for cancer, which is supposed to be like from one to three, were 238. So um, they did the stint. I am here. Through all this has been no pain. Um, and the amazing thing, I'm pr pretty much free from all my doctors now. But I got a check for my stage four cancer. So we took 11 family members to Disney World for our 60th anniversary. So we had been great. Well, the numbers in the cancer went down to under one. You have no pain. I have no pain. I've never had any pain. And my doctors say, you're a living miracle. You should have been dead. I said, the Lord has more, more work for me. So, yes. So. Yay. Yeah. Yay. 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 No, it's awesome. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Thank you, Bill. I have a message. I have three messages. And, uh, oh, man. <clears throat> yeah, I think I need to give this, say this. So, you have your Bibles, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 7. Um, 
I want you to I want you to see something because I believe that especially on the heels of of Bill's testimony that there is an invitation for us you I as individuals that we step in and bring our impossible whatever it is situation to the Lord and that the Lord is wanting to do the same thing Come that on. he's doing for Bill for you. Yes. And so, and me. <clears throat> and so I want to read something and, and, uh, and it's going to be a little bit tricky to follow along. Uh, it could be. So there's three, there's three characters in this story. We're starting with Isaiah uh, seven. One is um, Ahaz who's the king of Judah. The other is King Rezin of Syria. Some of your uh, texts might say Aram. And then there's Pekah, which is uh, the king of Israel. So um, Rezin and Pekah have joined together to attack Judah, Ahaz. All right, you with me? So, verse 2, the news had come to the royal court of Judah, Syria is allied with Israel against us. So the hearts of the king and his people trembled with fear like trees shaking in a storm. Verse 3, then the Lord said to Isaiah, take your son, you can translate that one, And go out to meet Ahaz. You will find him at the end of the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool near the road leading to the field where cloth is washed. Tell him to stop worrying. Might want to underscore that one. Tell him to stop worrying. Tell him he doesn't need to fear the fierce anger of those two burned out embers, King Rezan and Pekah. Yes, the kings of Israel and Israel uh, and Syria are plotting against him, and they're saying all this stuff that they're going to do. And then the Lord is leaning in through Isaiah, and he is saying, this will never happen. This invasion will never happen. It will never take place in verse 7. And then he goes into this poetic prophecy, for Syria is no stronger than its capital, Damascus, and Damascus is no stronger than its king, Rezin. As for Israel, within 65 years, it will be crushed and completely destroyed. Israel, verse 9, is no stronger than its capital, nor its king. And then look at the very last. He says, in my translation, unless you're... (coughs) Unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. For some of your translations, it says, unless your, 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 your faith is firm, you will not stand. And so, on the one side, God, with all of his might, if you would, was leaning in, trying to convince Ahaz this is not going to happen. There's actually uh, the verse after says, come up with a sign. Make it as big as you want. Make, make the sign as big, as hard as you want. He's trying to convince Ahaz, this is not going to happen. But he says, unless you believe, or unless, you, yeah, unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. And so I realized, wow, it's kind of putting it back on me to believe. And then I begin to think, why don't I believe? What is it that's keeping me from believing? Well, a lot of it has to do with the past. A lot of, ha- a lot of it has to do with disappointment. I don't want to be disappointed again. And yet the Lord is, and I feel like that the Lord is drawing a line, not just for me, but I think it's for all of us, the promises that the Lord has made available to us, to you, to me, through his word, 
Everyone knows that his word cannot be broken. And another thing concerning his word in God, in Titus chapter 2, verse 1, who cannot lie. So he has said things to you, things to me that's out there that is waiting for us to believe. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> but it's waiting for us to believe. And, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't want to belabor this point, but believing is a choice. And so <clears throat> when Jesus came back from the dead and he began to appear to different people, he appeared to Mary Magdalene first. She goes back and tells all the disciples they didn't believe her. So later, Jesus catches up to his disciples, and it says that he rebuked them, or he reproached them, not rebuked, he reproached them. Well, the other place where you find that word reproach is in James. If any of you lack wisdom, ask God. Who, who gives wisdom without reproach. And here he is with his disciples reproaching them because of their unbelief. Belief is a choice. Basically, he's saying, you chose not to believe even though this person, Mary Magdalene, has been with us for, who knows, three years you know her very well. Her testimony, she is a credible woman. She, her testimony is credible, and yet you chose not to believe. So, it seems like that the Lord is bringing this, this thing of trusting in him back around full circle for us as a church. And so I it seems like as a church we need to step into this invitation. And I don't know how to do that. So it's one thing for me just to say something to you and we can all walk away and go, wow, that was an amazing point. I've never seen that before. You know what I'm going to And then there's another thing to go, wow, that was an amazing point. I think there's an opening right now for us to step in. And I think that, <clears throat> you know, probably the easiest, and it's real easy to step into the kingdom all at a lot of it has to do with just repentance. Just, man, Lord, I'm so sorry. That's me. I do not want to be like that. I confess that as sin. Please forgive me. And boom. Like it talks about in Jonah, chapter 3, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. So Jonah was given this word, this instruction from the Lord. He ran away, got on a boat, trying to run away, trying to sail away couldn't sail away. They it figured out that the storm was a reason. He, he, he was the reason for the storm. So they throw him overboard. This fish comes up, fish whale, whatever, comes up, swallows him, spits him back out onto the shore three days later. In his repentance, he repented while he was in the belly of the fish whale. How many people know that's a great place to, to, to repent? <laughs> and he did. And it says, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. That's right. That's right. So it's like, ah, that's all I needed. You repented. Okay. Uh, let bygones be bygones. Here's the initial call. This is what I've called you to do. So can we do something just because this needs to be, I feel like it needs to be activated. And, 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 you know, here I go with this disclaimer of apologies. I'm not going to apologize. Um, <laughs> hey. We're doing the best we can up here, okay? It was like 
For those of you watching online, I had this chorus up front that went, yay, 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 he's not going to apologize. Um, let's do this. Could you stand? Would you mind standing? And even if, the, if this is not for you or whatever, I get that. But, you know, stand, it's good for circulation. But, oh, yeah, sure. You, want to come, you have to come up. Okay. So I just asked permission if I could say this. Um, so I was one of a few pastors that walked with Bill and his wife, Karen, because Bill would never say this about himself because they're both so humble. When he got the diagnosis, he immediately did not attach to it. Yes. He didn't attach to it. I saw them exercise their faith and go, this is not God's will. This is not anything. It's handed down from his hand. I'm not attaching. Amen. Right? So in that place... It was like I watched them go, okay, we bless the doctors, we bless, you know, they give us an idea of what's happening, but it's not, it's, it's truth, but it's not the truth. And so I watched them in their maturity of, of years of seeing God be faithful, God be faithful, God be faithful. They were like, he's going to be faithful again. And I watched them rest. All they did was enter into the finished work of the cross. Now... Is the enemy up there the whole time going, yeah, but is he really who he says he is? I mean, really, the enemy has not changed the script. He's not very creative. Is God really who he is? Is he who he says he is? And so it did take them a, an intentional abiding, right? It's intentional. We continue to abide. We continue to abide. I'm in the vine. I'm the branch. I'm in the vine. Apart from him, I can do nothing. And I watched them abide. And continue to abide and then reach out when they felt weak. Could you pray? Yes. Right? It wasn't, they didn't feel shame for having a need. Right? So I just want to free us right now. We don't have to feel shame because we have a need. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. So, thank you. So if you keep reading, I'm just going to read two verses in chapter 8 of the same story says this, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else does. He said, don't call everything a conspiracy like they do and don't live in dread of what frightens them. Make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble, he will keep you safe. Yes. So, Lord, as we are <clears throat> listening to your present voice, your, the present voice, the present tense voice, Lord, we say, Lord, I say, Lord, I, I have been one of the ones that has fallen prey to the conspiracies of men I've, I've been the one that's, that's fallen prey to looking at my circumstances rather than looking at your, to your promises. And, and Lord, I declare, I just want to say, Lord, I call this sin and I'm repenting of it and I'm letting go of it. And so, Lord, we as a congregation, Lord, we stand before you. And it could be, it could be personal issues, uh, health issues. It could be, I don't know what your issue is. It could be children. It could be family. It could be job. It could be uh, uh, what, whatever it is. But Lord, we are laying this aside, Lord, and we're stopping looking at the impossibility of it. And we are turning our eyes to look at the possibility of who you are and who you say you are. And we put our faith in your word, yes. in your word, not on our surroundings, not according to what we see or what we don't see. We walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. Yes. So Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would help us get untangled, unentangled from the cords of unbelief that are trying to drag us down. And whether the, it doesn't matter where they came from, but Lord, take, would you just take the sword of your word in the name of Jesus and cut 
that away from us. Cut that away from your children. I cut that away from you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Just like we read earlier, we, you have been purchased. You are not your own. He has purchased you with his blood. And now we have been transferred from a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of the son of his love. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. That might be it. I think that if we walk out of here with that under our arm, we'll be doing good. So, Christine, you want to come up and, yeah. Can we thank yeah. Pastor Jeff? That's good. So good. Oh, it's lovely being with you all today. Hey, so just to, as a reminder, we have the worship and prayer tonight. What time? Six. Six. Good. And I just want to put, as a member of the discipleship department, uh, that's Matt, Amanda, uh, Shannon, and myself, we really prayed into, okay, Lord, what do you want to disciple us into this year? And really felt like the Lord said the Sermon on the Mount, that it was really important that we get those principles, those truths into us. So I just want to encourage you, we actually start this Wednesday. So if you were not sure if you wanted to um, come to class, we really encourage you to pray, ask the Lord, obviously. Um, but please go ahead and register for that. We have childcare, but we need, in order to make provision for you, um, we need you to register your kids. Uh, that's here Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock. But, you know, it's rich with the Beatitudes and and little dainty morsels like hatred and murder and divorce and adultery and how to be light. Like we're going to wrestle with all those things. And so we would love to join, would love for you to join us. So you just need to go online and register for that. Okay. I've said that. And we have an amazing prayer team. Come on up prayer team. Give it up for our prayer team. So they pray and ask the Lord what's on the Lord's heart. And so we get words of knowledge, which I'm going to give you in a moment. But any prayer need that you have, we delight to just partner with the Lord with you in praying um, for any need you might have. I ask that you come to this aisle and where we can serve you. So any prayer need that you might have, and, and this is for those watching online as well, um, if you have any of these things, this is what the team got for first service, uh, you're struggling with headaches, pain in the scapula, a ruptured disc, hernia, Brain fog, well, that would be most of us now, wouldn't it? Sorry, no. We reject that brain fog. Um, ulcers, knees and knee injury. <clears throat> uh, I see you out there. Brain injuries and tumors, scarlet fever, anxiety, self-hatred, skin rash, debt, freedom, uh, PTSD related to military service, spinal alignment, freedom to live in joy. So if you've been praying, Lord, I don't know how to do this joy thing. We'd love to pray for you. Freedom to communicate what's in the heart and on one's mind. And then freedom from fear, replaced with courage. So if you have any of those, or if you're watching online, you can grab any of that by faith. Again, just come to this uh, line, and we would love to pray for you. Hello there, Pastor hey, Jeff. I forgot something I wanted to tell you. Um, so I don't know how I forgot this, but it doesn't matter. Brain fog. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not, I'm not grabbing that. I'm not grabbing that. Our first fruits offering. You guys want to know the total? $451,000. So, the largest, largest one yet. So, we are praying into, just like we ask you to pray, and to identify the enemies, where the places where the enemy has, has got gates we're doing the same thing here. So we will report on that uh, as it happens. So, but I did want you to let you all know that. And thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you so much. So anyway, okay. Have a great week. Have a great week, yeah. <laughs>